In this lesson, we're going to look at the warnings associated with the APFD system, including land mode and auto land warnings, and the ATS and auto thrust systems. Let's begin with the flight director system. You'll recall that if one of the engagement conditions for an FD is no longer met, for example, the failure of the associated flight control computer, the affected FD disengages. If an FD disengages when no autopilot is engaged in command, the FD mode and engagement indications black out on the FMA. In addition, the FD bars are removed and replaced by a red FD1 or FD2 message on the upper left-hand corner of the PFD. If an FD disengages when an autopilot is engaged in command, only the FD engagement indication on the FMA and the FD bars are removed. The FD mode indications remain visible because the FMA is associated with the engaged autopilot. Let's look at system switching in the event of an FD failure. AP1 is engaged in command when flight control computer number 1 fails. The FD bars on PFD1 are recovered by switching to flight control computer number 2. As you can see, on the captain switching panel, the system 2 push button illuminates to tell you that PFD1 is now being fed by FD2 and in turn by flight control computer number 2. Now look at the first officer's switching panel. This situation is indicated to the first officer by the Captain 2 push button illuminating. If you now look at PFD1, you can see that this is confirmed by column 5 of the FMA displaying FD2. In addition, the FD1 warning message has been cleared and the FD bars are displayed again. Before we move on, there are three points you should remember about FD system switching. First, it is possible, providing the original failure has been recovered, to return to the normal operating configuration by selecting the captain's flight director switch again. Second, there is no priority between the captain's flight director switch and the first officer's flight director switch. It's simply a case of who gets there first. Third, it is not possible for flight control computer number two to feed PFD1 and flight control computer 1 to feed PFD 2 at the same time. There is one other FD warning that you may encounter. When you see the FD bars flashing, it indicates that the FD has reverted to the basic modes of vertical speed and heading. This happens, for example, when an ILS transmitter failure occurs during approach. Intentional or automatic disconnection of an autopilot, for whatever reason, results in the cavalry charge sounding, a master warning, and an AP off ECAM warning. The autoland warning lights flash if AP disengagement occurs when the aircraft is below 200 feet radio altitude. And land mode is engaged in the land track phase of the approach. We're going to look at the autoland warning function in the next topic. The cavalry charge and AP off and auto land warnings can be cancelled by pressing either AP disconnect push button. There are three warnings associated with land mode. The auto land warning, excessive glide slope beam deviation and excessive localizer beam deviation. 
Glide slope and localizer beam deviations have been covered in Flight Instruments and Navigation, ATA 34. So let's concentrate on the Autoland warning. The Autoland warning is only enabled during the tracking phase of land mode. When it's activated, you have to take over and fly manually. In addition to being in the land mode tracking phase, the aircraft must also be below 200 feet radio altitude. And its landing capability must be either Category 2 or Category 3 before the Autoland warning is activated. If these conditions are met, then the Autoland lights on the glare shield flash when the excessive localizer or glide slope beam deviation warning is activated or the AP off ECAM warning is activated. In this example, we have lost the FD bars. The AP disconnects and triggers the ECAM warning. The Autoland warning will also be activated if a long flare is detected or a difference of 10 feet is detected between radio altitude 1 and radio altitude 2. The Autoland warning can be deactivated by pressing either of the AP Disconnect push buttons. Pressing either AP Disconnect push button clears the AP Off ECAM warning and Autoland warning. The ECAM then displays the Land 3 inoperative warning. If one of the arming conditions for the ATS is lost, a single chime sounds, a master caution is given, an ECAM message is displayed, manual thrust appears in amber on the FMA, and the ATS lever trips off. As you know, auto thrust disengagement or non-engagement is indicated by the manual thrust warning on the FMA. In the ATS lesson, you saw how the manual thrust warning is displayed under conditions where the autothrust function would not be engaged, for example, during taxi and touchdown. Manual thrust is also displayed when the autothrust disconnect push button on the throttles is pressed as this causes the disengagement of the autothrust. The manual thrust warning will be displayed until autothrust is engaged or re-engaged. Finally, the manual thrust warning is displayed whenever the ATS is armed and autothrust is not engaged. That completes our look at the autoflight system warnings. In the next lesson, you'll begin your look at the FMS.